We are recording. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, there was a little uh, music also, Coding from Home. Um, Jakob and I are very happy to see you here. Uh, it's the second webinar in this series called Coding from Home. The first one we had last Friday. Uh, you can now see the recording of this webinar uh, on the Code Week website if you go to the blog section. And you also have links to all the different presentations. Um, we hope you're all safe and coping well with the situation in your different uh, countries. And um, we're going to have four presentations today. Uh, we will start with Anna Stamatescu. She is EU Code Week ambassador from Romania. And then we will have Madhu Malti Sharma, who is ambassador in Luxembourg. And then we will have two leading teachers presenting. Pauline Maas from the Netherlands on an unplugged coding activity and Stefania Altieri, uh, Italian leading teacher, uh, a very nice online coding game, which is actually already posted on the blog post. Um, Jakub will remind everyone about will, posting questions. I will just remind, I just put, uh, wrote also in the chat, so in case you have questions, feel free to post them in the chat. I will collect them and then after each presentation, we can ask or, or follow up. And uh, please don't forget to mute yourselves and uh, enjoy the webinar. We hope you will like it. And we are very happy that you are with us, currently 48 people. Yes, great. And uh, for the future, you know, we have a big meeting room uh, now. We have big capacity, so you can also spread the word to any colleagues or friends or people that are interested to join us. Uh, okay, so we'll give the floor to Anna. Uh, from Romania and the rest of us maybe we can turn uh, off the, the camera so we have more bandwidth for Anna. <laughs> Thank you Annika. Uh, I will share my screen now with this. So Annika can you um, yeah. tell me? Okay. Yeah I can see. And I will, so this is me, I'm Anna. I will turn off my video now because it's very weird to see my presentation and myself. So I will pop, my face will pop up right back at the end. But until then, you will just hear my lovely, some say, voice. <laughs> well, well, let's see where, okay, stop video. So, hello everyone, really nice, really glad to, to be here with all of you and thanks for joining. As Anika was saying, uh, I'm Anna. I'm a Code Week uh, ambassador for, for Romania and I work as a digital education coordinator and instructional designer at the biggest tech resource center for NGOs and educators in Romania, Asociatia TechSoup. My presentation, I, I called it Keep Calm and uh, Code On. It's, um, it also has uh, to do with coding, but also some tips and tricks or uh, lesson learned or initiatives from Romania uh, in, this, uh, in this time. I liked uh, very much in the first webinar as I uh, saw just small updates from each country and I uh, took that idea and I will start with just um, a short overview of what um, our Minister of National Education is doing in Romania. Um, basically, uh, they promoted, they supported three big projects in this time to help teachers uh, to, to adapt from offline to online. The first one being uh, Teleshkuala. It's basically school on television. It's addressed mainly to, um, uh, to students in uh, the, um, the last year of high school and uh, those in the eighth, eighth grade, because we have two big national exams in those um, time slots. And basically what they're doing, they're taking the, um, the subjects that will be at uh, these exams and um, the, having teachers uh, go through the exam materials. 
So this is the first one. The second one, basically, it's it's not new. This one is not new. Uh, it's been going on for some time now, but now they have are really focused on delivering uh, webinars on um, tech resources that teachers can um, can use to communicate with students. The focus being not on uh, teaching new uh, new curriculum, but just to not lose contact with those students that uh, are home because uh, officially a school is closed in Romania until the 22nd of uh, April. And the third, as uh, I, I can proudly say, it's uh, a project we are also involved, Asociația TechSoup, and it's a project where we showcase um, um, tech resources, tech uh, digital tools that teachers can use to, as I said, keep in touch with students, but also uh, articles and best practices on how to adapt to, to this situation, because it's very difficult to go from on offline to online, uh, full online in such short notice. And we just want to, to uh, communicate with teachers and tell them it's okay to, to feel a lot of pressure, but just take baby steps and to to, don't, to focus on keeping in touch with students rather than um, teaching new new things. Teaching online in this uh, situation, I would just focus on this this for. Um, for, um, I don't know, advices for teachers in this time. First, be realistic. Just don't set too many goals for uh, yourself or your students or too high ones. Just make safe, small steps that uh, you can achieve and be, be um, uh, confident in yourself. The second one, and the, I think the most impo important one, is just be kind to yourself and don't put too, ma too much pressure, as I said, on yourself. Some things you will do good uh, and from some you will just learn and it's just okay. The third one, um, be patient. Moving from offline to online at such large scale is uh, difficult for you, for everyone, and it takes time time for working, but also time to reflect and to take just that uh, cup of tea to relax. And the last one is wait, to adapt. It's okay to find out that uh, something doesn't work for you. Maybe a digital tool you, you wanted, you tried, or a new process, you can change it and you should change it for sure you will find something that works for you and your students. Teaching online, some, I see a lot, a lot of uh, digital tools being promoted and that's a great thing, but my advice for you is just, would be just uh, to pick some that uh, you will test and see if they work for you. And um, if you want to choose more, just be very specific when you communicate to your students, which is for what. Also, as uh, I said, test them with your students. They may work for some other teachers, but not for you. And that's okay. And of course, change if uh, they're not suitable for you. From all these uh, digital tools I, uh, I mentioned here, some of my favorite would be uh, Zoom, of course. Um, Kahoot is uh, great for fun, interactive quizzes with your students. And don't forget anytime WhatsApp, Facebook, and um, YouTube. So this ancient uh, with not ancient, but uh, these these tools that are already used to communicate, they can be used also in the teaching uh, process. Teaching online, um, what we have, uh, what I have personally learned from all this experience is uh, that the community has a big power in the sense of um, if you have a community of teachers in, in which you are, you should brainstorm with your fellow teachers, 
uh, and ask them what works for you I, uh, and also ask for help when you need help don't be afraid to to ask for help i'm i'm mentioning this because although they seem very simple and no brainers they often are neglected and they're not uh, put in practice um, as the screenshot uh, is from our Code Week Romania Facebook page. What we tried to do is just gather our community, our teachers community, and uh, brainstorm online with them which tools they use for their students so other teachers can see what worked for them and maybe try those uh, digital tools. Again, the power of examples from the community uh, what we at Associate TechSoup uh, are doing now, because we are working with uh, thousands of uh, teachers, uh, mostly computer science teachers and primary school teachers, is uh, showcasing the, the stories of how our uh, teachers are adapting so fast in this situation. And it really helps because these teachers we are interviewing are not mentioning that everything is great and oh they adapted so fine no they're really saying things how they are that also they had a difficult time processing and finding the tools they need and just saying it's a process you will get there this is how i did it maybe it will work for you too teaching online another lesson on how to adapt uh, currently, we are um, at the last module of our um, online course on Scratch. Basically, we're, we have um, about 700 teachers enrolled in this uh, first online blended experience on Scratch. And we had, uh, we had this situation where the final pro project they had to do was an offline scratch activity in their classroom. And because the schools were, are closed, we had to figure out what, which final project the teachers should do. So we switched to um, proposing to our students, the teachers, to use Zoom for coding together with, uh, with their students or even recording their, themselves, making a scratch tutorial, putting in on YouTube, and just um, the, giving a little homework for their students to watch the tutorial and also do a scratch game. The, I think the almost final example of uh, a tool you could use to carry on coding with your students is uh, Raspberry Pi. So uh, you should go to, to check out the Raspberry Pi Foundation website because they have a lot of projects that can be uh, just step-by-step um, step, um, used by students on Scratch, on Python, on ev any topic or hardware or software mostly you can think of. And the great thing is they're on, based on uh, levels. So you have beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Annika, I think I was right in time, eight minutes. Perfect, very, very nice. Thank you so much, Anna. So if anyone has any questions for Anna, we can take a few now. Um, I was monitoring the chat, Annika, there was no, there was no like question per question. There were, people were happy about the presentation. Uh, saying great presentation, Anna. So well done. And uh, Anna, you kept the time as well. But if anyone has a question, feel free to post it in the chat. We will ask. I will also give you, Annika, my presentation and the, all the links. So, and if you have any follow up questions, I am here and we can have. Yeah, we will. Another. You can also ask Anna at the end of all the presentations. Um, if we can do, we, we can move on to the next one maybe. And if you have questions, you can also type them now in the chat. That's okay. Jakob will keep track of everything. And Anna can answer then afterwards. Okay, so I would leave, like to give the floor now to our Luxembourg ambassador, Madhu Malti Sharma. Um, and uh, yeah, good. If you want to share your presentation and then Anna, maybe you can turn off. Um, I am turned off.
there she is off okay super so i will do that let me know when you can see my presentation everyone yeah. now we can see it okay super so very good afternoon everyone uh, greetings from luxembourg we are in lockdown like several countries uh, but instead of looking at it like a disadvantage we are trying to make the most of it and continue to keep calm like anna said but also make the most of it by continuing to code at home so uh, apart from wearing the hat of eu code week ambassador of luxembourg i also wear the hat of eu robotics national coordinator for luxembourg and i also run a non profit where we teach kids to code over the weekends uh, and it's called workshop for me so today i want to talk about three initiatives that we have taken specifically for these times so i'll start with uh the first one so generally we run weekend sessions which are in person where children come um, into a location it's an informal atmosphere and they continue to code and they have peers to guide them so people their age who help them out uh but because the schools were closed and we were asked like we decided not to run any in person sessions we decided to move it online and we have been doing the sessions over the weekends online and it has been going very successfully mm -hmm. so i wanted to share some practical tips of how we did so you know like anna mentioned everyone is not prepared to do stuff online to start with we were able to tr transition beautifully thanks to technology and thanks to the internet imagine having this lockdown with no internet yeah it's uh, unthinkable uh, at least for me and for several other people so i would like to share some practical tips some of these possibly you already know but i will mention them nevertheless so the first one is about tools uh, we are all using zoom and it works well so we use zoom but i know that um, like in for example in other schools here in luxembourg and other teaching places they are using microsoft teams they are using webex they are using go to meeting several of these platforms have been made uh freely available their pro versions for schools and educators to continue uh, mm -hmm. with life as usual so definitely uh, check check those out if you are not already aware uh the second thing is it is important to have the sense of camaraderie and the fact that we are still together even if we are not physically meeting so um one of the practical tips would be to keep the camera on when we Uh, when you run the session if it is possible to do it given the bandwidth we do that because then the children still feel as if they are you know sitting together and sharing stuff the third part is involvement so uh, since we were running it in an informal atmosphere and people were sharing their projects we wanted to continue to have that spirit with everyone so we do screen share just like we're doing right now for the participants to show the projects that they have done and then for everyone to give advice on hey why what if you add one more level to your game or something like that so we uh, i mean that's another practical tip i would like to share keep that sense of involvement with your classrooms and your uh, children the next one is uh, in terms of delivery so technology is also offering us tools which are similar to real life for example you know you can say that uh, we would like the class to keep quiet you have the possibility of muting uh, everyone in your session and asking them to unmute when they want to talk there's also the feature to raise the hand if they have a question so uh, continue to use these features which the tools are providing and uh, the next one i would like to mention is relax so in our uh, in the real sessions people have breaks uh, they have a cookie break where they share a snack and fruit so we continue to keep that during the online session we say okay now it's time for a break and we play a little uh, cookie game or something like that while they are eating the snack and everyone can see on the camera that people are still enjoying uh, the break the next one is uh, playback so uh, if it is possible definitely record it and share it later for people who missed or if someone would like to go back to you know something so i i think this is an added advantage which the real classroom does not have you cannot uh, i mean unless you are taking efforts to record it but technology is providing you this opportunity so this is one big uh, you know up that we should try to use and in terms of tools that we have been using we uh, like and these are simple to use so scratch junior scratch app inventor python and html and css so we don't dictate tools the kids are always working on whatever they want we continue to let them uh do that so that's uh, one of the initiatives that i wanted to talk about now apart from the regular sessions 
because of this time there were a lot of children at home and the parents were expected to continue to work out of home so several parents came back and said how do we keep the children occupied some schools were um, continuing classes as usual and running them online whereas some schools were not really able to do it because like anna mentioned it takes some time to get up to speed and you know make sure that uh, you have the tools available the teacher is comfortable and it's the same across uh, all subjects and all of those so we announced additional online coding options so people could join and starting from age 4 onwards so we did uh, we are doing scratch junior sessions for 4 year old onwards we are doing uh, scratch uh, there's also an initiative maybe many of you know called uh, hashtag #scratch from home so it is a good way of Com, you know staying connected with the rest of the community all over the world and sharing the scratch projects that you have so we've been running scratch sessions and also mobile app development using uh, app inventor the other thing that i would like to highlight is peer learning so always give the uh, flow to someone of the age of the children who are doing it to showcase their project or show what they have done because it helps to motivate the other children to uh, you know try to do something as well so that's uh, that's another thing that we have been following and it uh, so this is our second week running of the additional online sessions and it is uh, it is going well and uh, the other thing i want to highlight is it is being run by a girl in tech facilitating peer learning so it is also an opportunity to you know up the number of girls and women who are involved in technology via coding so that was the second initiative the last you know uh, the last you know uh, innovative initiative that i want to talk about is it's a time to innovate and come up with new things as well because of the lockdown so instead of looking at everything in a negative manner it is possible to turn it around and say now what can we do better than we have were able to do before so last year along uh, with the collaboration of digital luxembourg uh, from the ministry of luxembourg we had launched an an initiative called codutainment and uh, codutainment the idea was to make coding and learning fun and entertainment so just like you go to a movie hall with popcorn and a drink and you watch something for entertainment the idea of codutainment is to go to a movie hall with popcorn and drink and learn stuff about coding and robotics and drones um within the movie hall and interactive so basically uh, having the entertainment in a fun manner so we launched this last year and uh, the cineplex version went off very well and during this time we thought it is a good idea to take that online as well and it gives the additional benefit that people from anywhere in the world can actually join this initiative so we are doing the next codutainment event on the 8th of april between 5 and 6 um central european time so if people from uh, america or that part of the world would like to join i saw someone from new york joined here it is possible to do so your early morning and for people on the other side of the world it would be their uh late evening so basically doing something like this so this is one of the initiatives that we have uh, launched and we would like to do more of these during the lockdown period so i would like to request any of you who are interested in wanting to become a speaker or talk about uh, any technology or stem related uh, thing in the next code entertainment we plan reach out to us and we will be happy to incorporate that as well so these are just some of the initiatives that we have launched and i hope you uh, would feel inspired to start and you know do do more stuff with the children and the rest of the community around you so uh, uh, that's that's all i had for today feel free to shoot any questions you have thank you very much man balti very nice i think next uh, webinar we will uh, definitely have a cookie break or a uh, <laughs> fruit break everyone has to bring a, a fruit uh i think that that was also what people were suggesting kind of in the chat um, yeah <laughs> i saw some reactions to that there were some questions jakob yes i had two questions uh so first question is from sofia reis muri uh, whether the initiatives that the uh, but we are this i just mentioned were only for people from luxembourg or with the teachers from luxembourg or whether other people others can also join so the answer is others can also join that's the beauty of online uh, others can join as well 
So I will share the presentation with uh, Anika and Yakub, and I can post the link. Uh, feel free to you know find out and join. Anyone from anywhere in the world can join. Just put it on SlideShare, and then we can put the link in the blog post that we will do. Okay, I'll do that. Excellent. And then there was one question and one answer, but I think it deserves to also be discussed, maybe. Um, the question was, what position to give to parents during online teaching? I think it's a pretty interesting question. And uh, Cornelia from, I guess, from Romania replied that, that her students, uh, when she is giving the, the, the lessons online, the parents stay in another rooms uh, because she is with the students. So, and apparently the parents are also satisfied and thankful for that. But uh, I think maybe uh, all of our panelists, or, or Anna and whoever else, uh, I mean, all of our panelists or speakers could eventually reply to that questions, question what to do with the parents when the online teaching is taking place. So I'll go with what we do. Uh, we, we are not preventing parents from helping. So for example, for four-year-olds who are comfortable with uh, the tablet, for example, they might not be comfortable with Zoom and how to share their screen. So maybe they need the help of the parent to start with and know, okay, this is how you share it. And then, uh, you know, like, you know, kids are very smart. They have a very steep learning curve and they quickly learn. So then they do not need the parents. Uh, that is one. The other thing is a lot of parents are needing to continue to work remotely. So they are not really available to be with the child and help for the whole duration. So it is absolutely okay to let the parents uh, continue to work or do whatever they're doing and get the kids to manage on their own. That's my uh, take on it. I would just add one on what not to do with parents. Just don't overcrowd them because as also uh, um, it has been said, uh, they also work um, from home and it can be really challenging to put them from a position of uh, parent to teacher because we see some not so good practices that teachers are putting a lot of stress on parents to make them work with their uh, children and it's not really a great uh, outcome. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you very much. Any more uh, questions? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I didn't see any. No, no, no. There were some, there were additional comments. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, people were like uh, like on the idea of having the cookie break, Anika. So that's something we definitely need to introduce next time. Everybody needs to bring <laughs> some, some cook, cookie dough. And uh, yeah, I think we can move forward to the next presentation. Yes. Okay. So we move on to the next presentation, which is by Pauline Maas, who is a leading teacher from uh, from the Netherlands. Yes. And she Good. will speak about unplugged coding. Please. Yes. A little bit. Yes. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Nice to be that there are so many people together. I will share my screen. Yeah. Yeah, do you see it? Yes, now we okay. see it. Very good, yes. Well, um, I made a coding bingo for you, for all to share in your, uh, in your classroom or uh, to share with the parents or share with the, ch with the children or you can make your own, so like this. In Holland, as since two weeks there's no school, and since yesterday it will possibly uh, last till the 1st of June, or they're telling, telling us that maybe that we go to school maybe in the beginning of August, so it will take a long time before they go to school again. So all the schools change to remote le learning, kids and parents are both at home, so I'm I put down some really easy to do and fun activities because I think it has to be fun too, yeah. So, I made a coding bingo for you with 16 different activities. And in this presentation, you all see links. And also, here is a link and I will share the link later, how you can make your own online bingo. So they can play online bingo and can use the tools. So you can print a card or play it online or use it in the classroom, or you can clone and edit it. So you can use it for yourself and change maybe the activities which are on the bingo. So I will go to all the 16 different activities for you. For instance, parents and children, they can bake muffins. 
and you can talk about input and output with your children. Because when you use the ingredients and you change the ingredients a little bit, the output of the muffins will taste differently. So then you had the subject like input and output, which is fun. So this is one. Here, I have like a pixel drawing. That is a website where you can make really nice pixel art. And of course, one pixel is a tiny dot on your computer and many different dots will make a drawing. I have the website here. You can say start drawing. And here you can make like a pixel drawing. So very easy and fun activities to do. You even can make like a picture from it or use it in another way. So here, the dance party is in one hour of coding activities. And on the one hour of coding activities, uh, they usually can do it by themselves. They don't need a teacher, they don't need a parents to do it. And they learn very simple block coding. And the fun with the, the dance party is that they really cool music and very easy to do. And of course they get a certificate, like all the activities on the hour of code. Here, sorting Lego. When you sort your Lego in color or shapes, always the computer is sorting Lego, sorting too. So when they learn how to sort it or they sort it, you can talk also about that your computer is also always sorting the input he's getting to get the output. And of course you can do Cody Roby with your, with your children. And um, after us, Stephanie will come and then she will explain the Cody Roby. So I don't have to do that. And of course, Scratch and Scratch Junior, which is always fun to do, but also dance. Invent a new dance on your favorite song and write down the steps you have to do. And let another one person read your moves and perform the dance. And if it's going like that, like how you described it, then you put it down perfectly. If it is not, you have to debug and fix the error. So just write down the steps, dancing steps you can do, which is fun. Here, I made a memory of computer words and I got it open here somewhere. Yes, here it is. Here you see the memory and I used all the nice pictures from the Hello Ruby website, which is really nice. And it is a memory and they have to get all the words together. You can play this memory together. Yes, I have one. Yeah. So that is nice to do. And it is the, the description is all in Dutch, but you probably will look at the pictures and they will understand it. And if it are too many words, here you can say, I only want like eight pictures and he will change it to eight or you can make it. So that's easy to do, you can use it. Fold a fortune teller. You know the fortune teller that you can open it. And of course, when you open it, different message will appear random. So that is a nice word which you can use too. And you probably have seen the sandwich robot <coughs> from Phil Beggar. <coughs> Here, I have a small part of it. This is the robot and he is making a jam sandwich <laughs> and you can describe how they have to do it. So and always it's an error or other things will go wrong and not working. And in here is a beautiful description how you can do that at home and use the very good words. <laughs> So we're almost there. Yeah. Play Angry Birds. Also on the hour of coding lesson. It's also, you can get a certificate when well, you've done it. And here, make your own laptop. I have it here. Oh. Yes, here it is. Yes. It's also from Hello Ruby. You can download this sheet and they can cut it all out and glue all the different materials on their computer 
and they can fill it here is the keyboard that you can glue it on top of it and they get like a really tiny nice computer what they can work on and they start thinking about the different kind of operating system where are the files going and what is the ram and what is your internal memory so that's really nice and children love to make this kind of things and for the more older children you have the arcade game on the Maycode website here it is you can do oh let's do it back you can do a tutorial on there and they can make like a really nice small game all together here and it is a very easy way to make this game and if it is ready you even can play you can play it on the screen and the children they love to do that so that is for 10 to 12 years old i guess here fold an origami shape and if they follow the step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial then they know how to do it they know how to read it and that is a discussing of learning an algorithm and here is my last make a paper chain with different kind of colors and all the different kind of colors those are all variables so that is nice to do so i think this is my presentation so if there are so many if there are more questions if there are questions i would love to hear it okay any questions for pauline uh we have uh jakub yes 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 uh, there were two questions three now i see so I take the latest one from Ismail Garcia Varea. Please, can anyone tell me where are the presentations and the ones of the previous uh, have been located for downloading? So this is more technical question. We are publishing a blog post later today or tomorrow with all the presentations on the blog of Code EU. So you will be able to find it there. But now uh, there is one presentation directly for Pauline. Uh, whether someone can take your activities and translate them to share them with the, her or his robotic community. Yes, so. that's, that's no problem. And I think it, uh, I put in the link so you can use my, my bingo. You can use my bingo and change it and uh, to your other, to your own language. So, and the memory from Hello Ruby, it's uh, all pictures and you, and they see all the words and a lot of, Dutch words are the same to English and Hello Ruby, the, the, all the, the website Hello Ruby, they all have in your own language because I guess it is translated in maybe 60 different kind of languages. So all the activities from Hello Ruby are also translated. So maybe, yes, you're, Annika, you say yes. So I hope that's it. <clears throat> So yeah, so, so so we will publish this uh, the presentation with all the links in yes. the blog post, so they will be available. Just yes. to remind that we are also recording this workshop, this webinar, so it will be accessible on YouTube. And uh, and uh, I just want to congratulate Pauline because so many positive comments in the chat. <laughs> really, people are excited, and people are uh, want to replicate and do the activities that you mentioned that they want to try. So. This is exactly why we are doing this webinar. Well, I, love to, I love to share because I also love to see other ideas I get from other people. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Pauline. So we will move on to our last presentation with Stefania Altieri, who's leading teacher from Italy. Hi. Um, please, there, there you are, hello. Hello, okay, I share my screen. And I put the, the link in the chat. Tell me when you see my screen, please. Uh, yes, now it's there. Okay. Okay, no, nowadays uh, we are experiencing a very difficult time in our lives. Teachers suddenly found themselves having, uh, uh, to use technology to get their students at home because students can no longer go to school because all schools are closed. So how to smart work, how to begin, how to begin a distance learning and help students from far away, how to go on coding through PC, computers and devices. My colleague Elisa Baraghini and I started from here to think 
a way to reach them, to make this emergency less heavy for them, to be close to them, to have quality time with them. So we have created a game, a playable game online with a computer or a smartphone, a sort of treasure hunt. You can see this. Uh, this game here. It's called the Trivial Coding. We set some coding quizzes, we link them also to QR codes, and we choose a format. Trivial Pursuit is a boarding game from Canada. It was born in Canada, in which winning is determined by a player's ability to answer general knowledge or popular culture questions. We chose different uh, coding challenges from Cody Robbie to Cody Color, from Pac-Man to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, uh, with the focus on algorithms and not missing scratch. So in each step, in each piece of cake, you can either click on the link or scan the QR code with your phone or just with your computer and solve the quiz. If you succeed, you will get a letter. You, if you find all the letters to form the keyword, you will be the winner. So I'll go through and I'll show you how it works. So you, you can choose a piece of cake, whatever you want which color you prefer. And uh, each uh, piece of cake uh, hides a quiz. For example, I will pick this blue. So you can scan this QR code or you can go here to the link. And if you click, you have your quiz and you need to solve it to get your letter. In this case, we have a scratch game called Cody Robbie Trip. You have here your instructions. So click on the cards to move Robbie, these cards, to the red square. So the path is this, to get the red square. But you can't pass on the gray squares, so they are obstacles. At the end of your path, you will have the letter you are searching for instructions, green card, go forward, red card, turn on the right, yellow card, turn on the left. Let's try it. So if you want, Jacob, you can uh, have the instructions from our chat and you can uh, give me instructions to move this uh, robot. For example, which is the path? Or how, how is this? Uh, which card would you choose? You tell me. Okay, I will go forward, again forward, and then you turn right, forward, forward, turn left, forward, turn right, forward, forward, turn left, and then forward. So you arrived your red square and you will get letter G. So in this way, we can have a piece of cake. You can choose which one. For example, let's take the yellow one and you will get another quiz. You can either scan this code or just go to the link and then you will get the new quiz that is uh, Cody Robbie. So, follow, following these instructions, which letter will you reach? So, go forward, go forward, turn on the right, go forward, go forward, go forward, turn on the left and go forward. So, the letter that you find will be your letter to, to find the final keyword. And I'll, I'll show you the brown one. So daily life, daily life algorithm. Again, if you scan this, you get this quiz. What's, 
what's the quid? You need to uh, put in order the sequences for how to plant a seed. Daily life algorithms put in order the following se sequences. So you put this on the timeline. For example, I will put in a, in a way, in a, in a correct or not. If you have red um, lines, it means that you made a mistake, so you need to correct yourself. And at the end, you find a letter. When, when everything is done, you will get the final letter. For example, I will go to the game again, and I'll show you the green one. Who wants to be a millionaire? This is a very famous game. If you go through this, you will find some quiz, answer correctly to all answers. So you get these um, questions, you need to, to give the correct answer and you will get another letter. Okay, then I'll show you another thing. The orange, the orange is Pac-Man Cody Quiz. So you go uh, either on the link, either on the QR code, and you will get this game. This is Pac-Man game. So press start. And when you press start, you will have different levels. Move forward, turn left, turn right. This is the, the card, and uh, which is the correct one. Of course, the first one. So Pac-Man will eat the... <laughs> that thing, the, the enemy. Encoding what's back for? Error. So you will get. Okay. So you go on with this and you will get the, the letter. Finally, we have the, the last one that is the pink one. Let's play with Cody Color. So you go here. It will um, connect to Scratch. This is another Scratch game in which you need to answer all the questions and uh, you will get the final letter because letters are six. And uh, at the end, you have all the letters. One when it's uh, ready, it's downloaded. Uh, if you know why programming is important, do you want to know more about coding and the Internet of Things, play with us. So you just play with this to have the final letters. At the end, you go to the final quiz, that is the seventh. Here, answer all the quizzes, get the letters and find the keyword. So you go here, you have the final, final game. You go on scratch, you put all the letters on the correct quiz and you will get the final keyword. If you solve all the quizzes, you will know where to place the letters, read the trivial coding keyword and be the winner. So we will try to be the winner now. I'll put all the letters on the correct quiz. Yes. was this, and N, and O, okay, so my connection is not good, but believe me, <laughs> that when you finish, you will have the correct word, coding, so I am very happy to have, to have this opportunity to show it, and I'll be, I go to my presentation again. And uh, the game, I, I can tell you, the game was proposed to, um, was also proposed in our retweening project that's called uh, Coding to Save the Planet as a task for all the partners. So some students from all over Europe have already played this game and enjoyed it. 
And uh, just with the link, you can enter and play yourself, uh, join it and try with your students. Uh, before leaving you, I just want to encourage you to keep going with passion and, uh, and enthusiasm because our students need, uh, need us and our smile more than ever. Uh, we, we all can make our part, contribute with our positive attitude, and so be strong, everything will be fine. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stefania. Very nice uh, presentation and nice game. Uh, actually, this game is already linked on the EU Code Week blog. Uh, yeah, there you can see it. Uh, also, we will link it again, of course, in the new blog post. Jakob, uh, any questions? No, I think people were commenting and thanking everyone to, to every presenter. Uh, Stefania, again, a big, uh, big applause and big thank you from many of the participants who like your your approach and the activities that you that you developed, and uh, they, I guess they will replicate it and use it as inspiration for their own activities. Uh, and uh, I just want to maybe remind that there is also a lot of very useful resources in the depository on the code website. So you can go there and, and find, uh, you know, interesting lesson plans or materials. And of course, many of them are meant for classes like taking place physically. But I guess I see, I mean, we know that you are very creative, so you can, um, you can easily adapt these resources to make them also a, an online resource. So that's all for me. And just maybe technically next steps with this webinar, the recording will be published on YouTube before the end of the day. We will post a link to it on our Twitter and Facebook. And uh, the blog post either today or tomorrow with all the presentations will be also published on the Code Week blog. And the next uh, webinar will be on Friday. I, uh, since we have planned it for Friday anyway, we have already three speakers, Iman Taktak from Turkey, uh, Maura Sandri from leading teacher from Italy, and Paolo Torcato. I think he, you are here online, uh, has also volunteered to present the projects. We still have one more uh, space for one more speaker. So if you're interested, uh, either you write it in the chat I think we will keep it at... Um, On Friday, we had it at 11. I think, I think so. we have it at 11. Yes, Friday. I yes, I have another Let's meeting at 10. So Yeah, 11 or 11.30. We will announce, I think, on, on, online. Just uh, Iman Taktak just uh, posted a, a, a quick post that he's not from Turkey, but Tunisia. Yeah, so. 11 is uh, Brussels times. Yes, 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 yes. yes. But we will uh, post it. We hope you're on Yammer. I know you prefer email, but I'm also afraid of spamming you <laughs> with, with the emails. But we will maybe send one more email uh, before the, with the co connection details. Um, any questions from anyone? Then we would just like to say thank you for joining. Um, and if you have any ideas on how we can help you from uh, EU level, please let us know. Um, just send us an email or chat to us on Yammer. Thank you very much, Jakub. Thank you, yes, everything. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you to all the speakers as well. Thanks for your time and for your passionate presentations, thanks.